Welcome to Analytic Yana's video tutorial series on elemental analysis of edible oils and fats by ICP OES. You're watching the first episode about sample preparation. Make sure to check out the other episodes as well on our Analytic Yana YouTube channel. Hello, my name is Sebastian. My colleague Sandro and I will show you some insights on how you can make your oil analysis with ICP OES more efficient. Therefore, Sandro will guide you through the entire workflow from sample preparation to data evaluation of oil measurements. You might know that ICP OES is a standard measurement technology in the trace element detection of oils. In crude oil, for example, elements that could interfere with the refining process are monitored. In lubricants, rare metals are monitored. When it comes to edible oils, food safety parameters such as toxic heavy metals, but also process monitoring and final product control are of interest for raw materials, intermediates and final products. The first question that arises when analyzing oils is how and if they have to be prepared before running them with ICP OES. This is because oils have different viscosities and crystallization states due to their different fatty acid contents. Mineral oils, but also some edible oils such as rapeseed oil are liquid at room temperature. Palm oil is solid at room temperature. Due to the high viscosity and the partial crystallinity of the samples, a direct measurement of the unprepared raw materials is not possible. One possibility for sample preparation is mineralization via ashing or microwave digestion. In addition to some advantages, this preparation technique has also some disadvantages, like the high dilution factors and therefore losses in measurement sensitivity. An also widely used alternative is the direct dilution in an organic solvent, which eliminates the digestion step. Furthermore, it simplifies the sample handling in the preparation step and allows for significantly lower dilution factors. This leads to an improved detection sensitivity of trace elements. The choice of solvent depends very much on the sample type. And here, orientation is provided by the corresponding industry standards. Often, several oil types or different processing stages have to be evaluated in one method and therefore it's advised to find a common solvent which can be easily found in a simple dilution test. Here you can see a 1 to 5 dilution of palm oil in butanol, kerosene and xylene. This makes it very easy to decide which solvent and which dilution factor provides stable measurement solutions. In the case of palm oil, we will now work in a dilution in xylene. Let's have a look at the sample and standard preparation procedure. Here you can see that the samples are partially crystalline and highly viscous. This is why the samples have to be liquefied and homogenized before use. We use an ultrasonic bath with appropriate heating to about 60 to 70 degrees Celsius for this task. The use of a hot block and an intense shaking of the warm solutions will lead to the same result. Solvent resistance of the sample vials is a very important topic when working from organic dilution. Common falcon tubes are not recommended here. If necessary, use glass vials or an appropriate plastic material. For trace element analysis, elements that may leach from the container material pose a critical issue since they can contaminate the blanks, standards and sample solutions. As for the solvents, it is recommended to test the vial material before use as part of the method development. For the accurate production of calibration standards and sample dilutions, we do not work in a volume dilution. Due to the differences in viscosities, a volume to volume dilution is not accurate enough. Therefore, we recommend to perform the dilutions by weight, since this provides the required precision. The preparation of the blank solution and the calibration standards depends on the magnitude of dilution as well as the viscosity of the sample material. In this example, we assume a 1 to 10 dilution. For optimal matrix matching, we use a blank oil that matches the viscosity of the sample material as closely as possible. For a high viscosity oil sample, we work with a 75 centi Stokes blank oil. For lower viscosity samples, we use a 20 centi Stokes blank oil. For the correct preparation of blanks and calibration standards, it is important to use the exact right amount of blank oil in the final measurement solution. 